I want to get back to Europe and to my next guest who says, uh, when you're in a hole, stop digging. If you're not in a hole, don't go there. He's the author of the new bestseller, From Bear to Bull, with ETFs. David Kotak is the chairman and chief investment officer at Cumberland Advisors. David, great to have you uh, here with nice us. Nice to be with you, Betty. And do you see room for optimism that Josh just talked about and outlined? That report that Josh just gave, he could have written out, uh, he could have read my work. <laughs> 1600 on quoted the directly from you. Well, it was quoted somebody else, but I, yes. I agree with completely with the report. 1600 on the S&P is my target. It may take us a year and a half or two to get there. In the United States, we're not digging a hole anymore. We already dug it. We're on our way out. We got manufacturing coming back, housing bottoming. The banking systems had its worst case. It's time to buy them, not sell them. Although Things we are, are getting ourselves better. into a fiscal hole. Well, we're about to confront the end of this year or the postponement into next year. The worst of the fiscal cliff. Something's going to resolve because it has to resolve. Mm -hmm. Whatever resolves is a smaller deficit, whether it's 200 billion smaller or 400 billion smaller. But it's a smaller deficit, not a bigger deficit. In state and local government in the U.S., we've already gone the other way in this cycle. State and local government have shed almost 500,000 jobs because they had to. So you're saying no matter what, we're going to see smaller budgets, we'll see tightening, fiscal tightening, and we'll see smaller fiscal deficits, which is eventually going to be bullish for the equity markets or bullish for the markets. Then. I, th I think so. And I think that the markets are starting to sense it. Now, the bond market is marching to a whole different drum. Oh, yeah. Look, crazy things going on in the bond market. 1.7% yeah. on the 10-year? I mean, we didn't, the last time we saw an interest like, rate like this on treasuries was in World War II when the Federal Reserve financed the war for two years and kept the interest rates low. Okay. And that, that's all. So we got crazy stuff in the bond market. Josh? Hey, David, so if the stock moving market is moving higher, I'd be interested to get to know where within that market do you see opportunity right now in terms of sectors? Where would you be overweight? Well, we, we are overweight, have been for the last six months. The consumer discretionary sector, Josh, we do not see a recession. Slow growth, low inflation, low interest rates is not a recession. It's not robust, but it's not a recession. Consumer discretionary, home builders, XHB, you know, we only use ETFs. Mm -hmm. Home builders, a good place to be. And we also like the banks. We've liked the regional banks. KRE is the ETF that captures the regional banks. We also are beginning to phase in the big banks. The bigger ones. After JPM and all okay. the bad news. It's time to buy them, not sell them. Uh, right before the break, we were talking about some of the um, some of the picks you have here through ETFs. You play only through ETFs uh, in the U.S. But before we get back to those, though, let's just talk about Europe first. Are you out of Europe? We, we are very underweight Europe. Europe, uh, large Europe, all of Europe is a huge weight in the world stock market indices. Mm -hmm. We are as underweight Europe as we can really stand. We own a little Germany. A little UK, a little Sweden, which is not in the Eurozone. All Euro through zone, ETFs you're talking All through about. ETFs. Okay. And a touch of Poland. Now, if you look at that, only Germany is in the Eurozone. The other three are in Europe, but not in the Eurozone. Hmm. They're managing their own currencies. So you're avoiding all these Eurozone countries then, except uh, for Germany? Except for Germany. Uh, the, we would avoid the periphery. We have even sold position in France. Really? It okay. hurt me because I love Bordeaux. So that was a hard. <laughs> so, but uh, but we, we even. And took you that did that. that why? Because the credit spread between France and Germany is widening. It's over 100 basis points in the benchmark. It's going the wrong way. The French are confronting political change. But the movement is or does not appear to be in the direction of more growth. Mm. We wouldn't touch Italy. There's serious issues. Spain is worsening as we speak. Portugal, the credit spreads are now so wide that the markets are saying it's the next Greece. Whether right. it will be or not, we don't know. Well, what begs the question, though, David, why even be in Europe at all? Why have any exposure to Europe? Ah, that's the issue that people miss. The German companies in the ETF, the biggest one is Siemens. The German companies in that German ETF benefit from a weaker euro. They're exporters. Those exports are on a tear. If they were in the Deutschmark, 
where would that currency be? Mm. It would be through the roof. Yeah. So big change there. Okay. Uh, back to the U.S. here, though. You yeah. said before that you've been doing very well, and certainly with regional banks, they have done very well this year. Consumer discretionary stocks, best performers in 2012 so far. You're now getting into bigger banks. Why? Uh, I think the JPM news put them over the top. Everybody hates over the top. It was bad news for the big banks. Okay. The market quickly said, maybe that's systemic, it'll reach Wells Fargo, Bank of America, it, it'll go elsewhere. To us, it looks like it's a one-off event. It's idiosyncratic, not systemic. But it took the group down. So you look at the big banks and you say, collectively, they're for sale below their book value after four years of a financial crisis when they have essentially taken all the hits. Enough already. When do you want to buy stocks in groups? You want to buy them when nobody wants them, when everybody sold them when they're cheap. Mm. I think Bank of America and the others are now cheap. Okay. Hey, David, let me ask you a question. I was reading uh, Adam Parker's most recent note from Morgan Stanley. He pointed out an interesting trend, which is that those dividend payers are really starting to work again. You look at telecom utilities, the staples, the three best performing sectors in the SP SPX over the last few months. you expect that trend to continue here? Are we seeing kind of the shift back to what we saw basically in 2011? Well, uh, Josh, it, it, I think the, the issue is dividends, when yields in government riskless are so low, are so attractive and they're going to be there for a while. Except you just named three of the four defensive sectors. Healthcare would be the fourth one. And, and on them, you, ha you can get the dividend yield, you'll get support. But there's a very serious question that an investor has to ask. If we're not going to have a recession, but slow growth, do I want to be in defensive st sectors? If you think we're going to have a recession, slow down, the answer is definitely yes. But if we're going to have recovery, the answer would be consumer discretionary will outperform. Uh, David, just quickly, uh, what, would you, what would be the one industry you would completely avoid here? Well, <laughs> it, very quickly, I would avoid telecom, and I would be careful about the weights and utilities. Okay, all right. David, great to see you. Nice Thank to you see so you. much, David Kotak uh, from Cumberland Advisors. And